Now, Avidus was showing you uh, an earlier version of Tecla. This is our latest version, which is Tecla Structures 2016. Very modern looking, as you can see. Uh, what we're doing is creating a one-to-one -one scale simulation of a structure. It's complete with bolts, it's complete with welds, as you can see here. It's complete with everything that's needed to manufacture. So really, uh, a prototype or a simulation of the structure before it's actually made. Everything is tackled as an object. So you can see, here, for example, this plate is 8 millimeters thick. I could make that, let's say, 38 millimeters thick. And you can see the thickness changes on screen. Okay, so everything's an object. If I click on these bolts here, you can see these bolts are 16 diameter. So I'll make those, let's say, 30 diameter. So you can see them change size. Let's say they're countersunk, like so, a special type of bolt. So if everything's an object, it can change very simply on screen. Even the shape of the plate, if we click on this plate here, you can see the shape, you can drag and make that plate any size that you want, simply by just dragging on it or dragging the handles to create the shape that you're looking for. So it's a very easy, natural system to use. And it's made for, it's made for structural draftsmen, not for computer engineers. Okay, let me just change the view slightly. And what we'll do then, how do I put a piece of steel into Tesla? Let's say I want, to, I want to add a beam from point to point. So we've got commands here for creating a simple column, creating a simple beam, also for creating concrete, which my colleague Stan will show you in more detail anyway. So concrete or steel items. If I want to draw a beam, we simply say I want to draw a beam, and it goes from this point. The input points are exactly the same as, as what you find in, in AutoCAD. So end point, midpoint, intersection, that kind of thing. So it takes us from this point here to this point here. You can see it's going to be three meters long. And that's the beam introduced into there like so. Within Tecla, you've got a full worldwide library of all section sizes from all countries. So Russian, Japanese, American, European, doesn't matter. And as Ernesto uh, said earlier, it's available in all languages as well. So for example, if I change this, let's say, to an IP, let's say, 450. So I'll click on that, modify that, now it's an IP 450. You can position this way you want to position it, so you can see about the centre, about the edge, top, left, right, bottom, centre, and you can spin and put that in any location you want as well. So it's really nice and easy to kind of position this where you want to put it, like so. Uh, the, any piece can also be curved, so you can click on this element here and say, okay, let's curve this in the Z direction, let's say 10 meters radius, and smooth it through 40 points. So you can see can, anything can be a curve as well. And um, you've got full under a redo on that as well. Uh, if we click on this here, we can also deform it, so I can say, let's twist that element let's say to 45 degrees, like so, so you can twist one end to the other as well, like that. So it's very easy to put these pieces in exactly as you want them. Okay, let's undo it. Again, in here, anything, so let me just put it here, it can be any sort of profile, so it's pipe diameter, and let's say it's uh, 500 by 50 millimeters, so you can type in the section if you know it, so you can change the profile you're looking for, and let's say it's a L, let's say uh, 150 by 150 <coughs> by let's say 45. So you can see you can change that to any sort of profile that you want. So all the libraries there in any method. If I just undo that back, I'll click on that, position it so it's set about the top like so. That's a beam in there. Anything you put in, we can quickly copy that. So let's so copy it from point to point. Very nice and easy. And let's introduce another beam that goes from, let's say, the midpoint of here, and it goes perpendicular to this point here. That's how easy you put the pieces in, like so. Okay, how are those pieces connected together? Right, so what we do then is you've got a library of worldwide standard connections. Again, from any sort of country around the world, all the standard connections applicable to that country. So we can say, okay, here I'm going to use an end plate that connects that beam to that beam. It looks at the two sections and then details you a connection accordingly. So you can see that I've just redrawn it, you can see them, so fit on that. 
You can see there, look, that that's detailed with the notches, number of bolts, everything needed for that piece. And they're drilled from through the face, like so. At the other side, we can say, okay, I'm going to use, let's say, clip angles. So we can say, come down here, let's say, well, a shear tab actually, so this kind of, that one connects to that one. So this particular connection here is a shear tab, like this. So different kinds of connections, like so. Let's say I've got a end plate on here, so let's just put base on here, and we'll say I want an end connection on here at that point. So base plate on there at that point, and over here, and let's say over here. Any of the connections we put on here, we can change them. So I can click on this connection here and say, actually, look, I'd like to have a two millimeter gap between them and the bolts. I'd like to have two rows of bolts, so let's say 150 centimeters. So change the number of bolts, set it up exactly as you want it, like so. In that case, I'll click on that, so now actually I want three bolts in there. So three bolts, modify, like so. And you can see there, quite easily, there's a clash, but there's also an automatic clash detection that will warn you in any case. So in this particular case here, I'll say, okay, let's get the bolts and let's change those to 120 centers, like so. Okay, so that's as simple as we put pieces in there. Then what we can do is we can say, okay, give me drawings of those pieces. So then we can select these elements here. You then have a standard drawing production system. And we can say, okay, give me drawings of those pieces. It applies a mark to the elements. And then it goes away and creates you fully detailed workshop drawings. So no need to draw them in AutoCAD. They're already detailed out for you, fully complete. So that's the kind of information that we're creating from tech. Let's just create those, it'll just take a few seconds. So, if we go to the, let's say, the drawing list, the drawing list, there we are, five parts, these ones I've just created. So you can see them on screen when I just open this up. Then we have the detailed drawing of the piece I've just put in there, <coughs> complete with the section sizes, length, area, total weight, a barcode if you want it. Called that up Minsk, uh, like so. Uh, and again, the drawing is just a drawing, so anything you create in Techly you can modify just like any other AutoCAD drawing. So you pick those up and sell up and put those at the top. It's just a drawing. So the next one, I won't save that, so I'll just look through a few of these options here. That's the bolt centers look at 120 that I just changed. So nice and easy. Go to the next one, and again, just a few examples of the work you can easily do. So there's a project, and that's how easy we can sort of add elements into there. This is some more elements here, like so, with the welds, the cups, the notches, the cups. So that's pretty much, in a very brief explanation, how Tecla works, how we create information. As well as the drawings, we can also create reports. So I can say, okay, reports. We can say, show me, for example, the material list for that project. Uh, this is in Excel. So that's an Excel spreadsheet for the material in that project. So fully, absolutely correct. The weight, surface area, lengths, everything complete. We can even create things like barcode lists. So we can say, okay, show me a barcode for every piece on that project. It can create a corresponding barcode for each piece as well. All fully automatic like this. So that's the kind of information that we created from Techler. Now, of course, the, the purpose of this presentation then is about how we link this down to the workshop floor machines. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and I'll show you in more detail how we do this. My, my proper microphone. Again then, so if technical structures are involved in all different kinds of work, just, just to repeat this, general structural, bridge work, miscellaneous, offshore, Again, plate work for transitions, we have a really good plate work side of things. Metal frame for kind of like, uh, for hotels and motels, very uh, light metal frame it's called. And of course, transmission towers. So that's a little look how Tecla looks. I just briefly showed you that. This is a real project, obviously. I'll, op I'll open up a real project for you and show you how it looks, not just a small model. You can see it nice and easy, the software is to use. Nice layout, easy to use, simple, made for draftsmen, not for computer experts. Okay, 
From the model end, what we're creating is material lists. So material lists, for example, for fireproofing, for barcodes, for uh, tracking, and let's just say general material lists. Automatically from the software. If the model changes, these material lists automatically update themselves. So anything you do on template, the information is always correct. Then of course the workshop drawings. I just created you a few. They were very simple drawings I created you, but they can be very complex. It doesn't matter, it still details them uh, correctly. So layouts, PB sections, individual drawings, well preparations, all shown on the drawings. And then of course those drawings are used to manufacture those parts if you're making them manually. So these drawings here are created by Tecla, and then the guy does and makes the parts, including the marks, things like that. As well as just basic drawings, we can also create section throughs, plans, elevations, however they need to be, so three-dimensional views on the structure, plans, elevations, again, any kind of view you want can be created. And again, then those drawings are used for manufacturing larger assemblies. Okay. As well as that then, what we, what we do then is we take that information, we take it down there to the workshop floor machines. There are many kinds of machines, and I'm going to run through all the sort of new machines that are available out there. So what we do then is we take the information from Tecla, I'm going to show you this live as well, and then this information goes to the machine, and the machine automatically makes these pieces based on the Tecla model. There's no manual input, there's nothing to do with simply email the file or take down drive, put it in the machine, and the machine will cut the pieces exactly as they were modeled in Tecla. So if the Tecla model's correct, all the information is going to be correct as well. Okay, so what we do in Tecla then is we export the data out. This is an example, these are true exports. It also, what we can export out as well is not just the actual basic information, but also the, the information that shows what the piece fits up to and what the mark of the piece is. So we know then that this beam here, 4087, connects to this plate. So that one really would sit on that plate. Uh, there's several ways in taking the information down. Uh, we, we create what's called DSTV from Tecla. DSTV is a standard language that goes to a CNC machine. Some machines use DXF files. We can also produce DXF files for plate cutting machines. So we can, we can actually link to any CNC machine on the market. But the modern machines, they use what's called XML or IFC, and this information really is not just information of parts, but of the whole project. So then it knows which piece fit to which, what they're welded with, so all the information of how these pieces fit together. So there, there are different levels that machines use, depends on the complexity of the machine. Okay, then once you get this information, we then pass it to a software. Let me show you this live actually. Then the software, what we can do is you, know, you can do it for using for nesting of pieces. So you can say, okay, all my pieces in Tecla, nest them to tell me how much material I need to buy. And then the software will automatically calculate and tell you how much material you need to purchase to make those that project. Same for plate nesting. So you can see then that the plates themselves, what happens is then it, it, you tell it what size plate you have and then automatically fits the pieces from Tecla and makes, makes the, the plate with minimum wastage. Okay, and uh, because we're sending now such information then you can actually then run it through the software and it will tell you how long it will take you to make that project in the workshop. So it can take the Tecla information, use it and calculate itself, it will take you three weeks, five days, six hours and two minutes to make that project. So it can take exactly, and let's say for example if the machine is broken, it can then you can rerun it and it will tell you what the implications of a broken machine will be. Okay, and then of course what we do then is pass it down to the machines for actual cutting. Uh, again, there are different types of machines. Some machines will just cut the piece to length. So very simply, just as that. Other machines will cut and drill. Some machines will cut, drill, and also mark out of how pieces fit together. And some machines will actually do as well 
the marking, cutting, coping, all, all the information, what's my mouse there? All the information of how these pieces fit together. So the different levels of machines they can download to. It depends which one you have. Okay, and then once, once that project's there, then you can then send it to them. This then will tell you which piece goes to which machine. So you can see that it tells you then, it does a calculation of how that goes through the factory. It's nice and simple. So you can run it through the factory and we'll do a little simulation. Okay. So, with Integla then, we just pause that, come out of there. So from the Tecla modeling, if we want to send this to CNC machines, we can't simply say, okay, let's export that. We can either send regular files or tubular ones. I'm going to explain this in detail a little later, but we export that out. And then what we do is we import that into another software. And in this software, then, you can see it takes in all the pieces from the Tecla model. These are all the pieces. And it takes them in. It's just actually calculating that. And you can see there, look, the marking of how these pieces fit together. See that, where they fit up? The holes, the drilling, that's exactly what the CNC machine will make. And then from that, what we do is we say, okay, take that project, and do sort of how long is it going to take me and where do these pieces need to go in the factory? So then the software will then tell you which machine each piece needs to go to. So for example, this plate here, it comes into the factory and it goes to this machine here. This machine here is a, a Gemini, which is a plate cutting machine. So it's a plate cutting machine and it's going to take three seconds to cut that. That's how long it's going to take to cut that piece. If I click on another piece, this one here, that's going to take 14 seconds to cut. It's going to be that machine. So I'm going to, have to come down, just choose a few different ones, let's say. So there's a plate, you can see it's got holes, so there's 11 seconds drilling time, 12 seconds to mark it. So each piece is there, and that's simply what we do with those. Let me just try and find a beam, that's a plate, plate. There we are, so that's a beam, you can see the beam there is going to go to this machine, which is a saw and drill, and it's going to take 1 minute 13 seconds to do that. Okay, so we can say, okay, I'm fine with that, then we can say, okay, let's take it to the section nesting. And then what we do is we tell it what material we have in stock. So let me just run this. So you can see, for example, I've got lengths of 6 metres, 8 metres, 10 metres, 12 metres. So you say OK to that, and it looks through that project, and it takes those pieces and nests them, so you can see exactly how that piece should be cut. So you can see here, for example, this one here, it's going to cut one length of 6 metres, it's going to cut this one piece. Let's just load it, because it's got a few scribing things to add to it. So this calculator will tell you the exact amount of material you need to buy. So there, look, you can see at the end, that scrap, that is the cut, that's the saw cut, so those pieces, look, are all actually nested together like so, so you can see there, but the nesting, that's how that piece is nested, and that's the piece it's going to be cut from, so that's all automatic from the software. If you say OK to that, then it will give you a purchase list, so you need to know what to purchase from the supplier. So we'll say save that and a way for us to, to actually get from supply. So nice and easy so far. Again, all that information is driven directly from Tecla, so there's no manual input whatsoever. So from this model here, what we detail is going straight to the factory to the machines. Okay, the machines then, what they look like. So first of all, I might have a little bit of noise on here for you, let me just try and keep the noise So this is a machine now which will do the layout marking. See that? Again, the information from Tecla then, it's, this is like a pen plotter but on steel work. So it actually marks on the steel, it changes the piece of steel into a drawing. So it marks on that piece of steel exactly how these pieces go together. So there's no possibility really of your guy putting that steel together in the wrong position. It's automatically marked down. So he's not reading a drawing anymore, he's reading exactly the piece of steel. We just skip it on a little bit. It goes on and of course it's drilling the holes each side as well. This is a pretty standard machine we've seen in a lot of fabricators. No, this is not really special anymore. Okay, then of course the plates, what's left in the Tecla model of course are the plates as well. So these plates here which are just modified, these plates here. 
what happens with those is we send those down then to the plate cutting machine. Just skip this on. So you can see then these machines then will process that plate, it will drill the holes, do any sort of tapping, but also the main thing is to also do the cutting of the plate, which you'll see in a moment. So any process that we've done in Techland, it will then go to the machine, the machine will cut out that plate exactly to fit. There can't possibly be a mismatch of holes to holes or pieces, everything's detailed correctly, it's all correct in the Tetra model. <coughs> like so. So that's the kind of machine, the basic kind of machine we're linking down to. Okay, so with me so far, simple enough so far, we've taken the model from Tecla, we pass it through the workshop, it knows which machine to go to, it knows how much material to buy, or you know how much material to buy, and then the fabricator knows how to put these pieces together because they're already marked out. Okay, and then once the steel's been through the machine, of course, it's ready to be put together into assembled pieces. So let me just go back a slide. So these are the pieces been through the machine, like so already, then of course they get delivered and then the guys put those together to fabricate real pieces, like so. From, you can see again an example where the layout marking is shown, shows how the piece fits together. So all the information you need to fabricate is already on the steel. That's pretty much the, the typical machines that are already out there. Okay. So most fabricators have at least got something like, like this kind of thing, plate, plate cutting machines, there may be obviously settling, but there's still plate cutting machines. Now, we do have later generations of machines now. Uh, an example of this is for cutting of pipes. Okay? Now, typically, then, people create sort of open out, wrap, we call called wrap around templates, where you open them out and it creates the shape, you wrap them and cut the steelwork. Within Tecla, then, we have a range of connections which you can apply to the actual steelwork. And then there's an example of these actually. I'll show you this live though. And then what we can do is we can export those down to a machine which specifically cuts pipes. This is like the new generation of machines. How it looks, it's always easy to show stuff like this live. So let's come over here. Let's say, okay, I'm going to add a piece of steel. So it's a beam and it goes from this point here to the midpoint of there. I just put something basic in. I'll put one from there to the midpoint of there. These are pipes, so I'm going to click on that and say, okay, let's change this into a pipe diameter, let's say uh, 300 by 20. So that's a pipe there, and I'll say, let's put that at the center. And then I'll say, copy that and make that the same profile. So I've got two pipes there, I've got to change the color as well, just to be smart. Let's change this, in fact, I'll click on that, say, copy the properties, make that the same color. Okay, so a couple of pipes. And then we can say, okay, let's draw from the midpoint of this pipe here, perpendicular to this pipe here, and then I'll click on that and say, make that the same section, like so. Then at the moment, that's just all the way through. So what we do then is put on a specialized pipe connection, like so, actually it's two, not five, two. Same word in English, but different. <laughs> And then we can say, okay, so we've got a tube here, we can say this piece here cuts to this piece here, and it looks and it actually cuts that now, so it's actually exactly the right shape. Like so, can you see that? If I just change the, you can see that's now cut, like so. If I just redraw that, you can see look, that piece is cut correctly around that pipe. Really nice and easy to do. Same one here, we can say that one connects to that one, and it cuts the two together like so. Again, pretty, pretty easy to do that. Uh, then what we do is we say, okay, let's take that pipe and export that to a special machine for cutting pipes. So we look at that piece there, we say, okay, let's, first of all, let's just number it. And then we pick up this piece and we say, okay, let's export that. Let's say down as a tubular NC file. And then what we do is we just say, export that pipe down. M23, there it is, look. And uh, then we have a piece of software, which is called HGG Program. This is the software that, that is actually on the CNC machine for cutting pipes. 
And then what we do with this is quite simply we open up that file and it will then tell the machine how to cut the piece. So let's open that up. Okay, let's just check today's day 26. There it is, you can see I did it today, there it is. So if we open that one up, there we have to click on this one here. We can then say click on that. You can see there that that is the tube and that is how it's been cut on the machine. Let's just turn that off. So there we have to just make that solid as well. So you can see that's the pipe there like so. That's exactly how it should be cut. We then send that to the machine. The machine then is a really nice special machine. And what the machine does, it reads that information and it cuts that, cuts that pipe accordingly. Now this is oxyacetylene but also it uses plasma cutting. The, you'll see in a moment exactly how this works. That's the file from Tecla to the machine. And then of course the machine itself, you'll see here, loads in the pipe and it cuts it not just it but cuts it with a 3d cutting so the preparation everything comes through and you'll see it in a moment so it cuts that pipe but it cuts it in three dimension if you look at the head look and there the torch you can see it actually moves in 3d so when the piece is cut there's no more preparation required those pipes fit together and it's complete so that then comes straight down from the Tecla model like so, bang straight on like that. So any pipe, and these can be any these can be massive diameter. It can be from this diameter to the biggest diameter pipe you can think of. These machines will cut anything. So that's the sort of next generation of machine. I'm just checking my time, make sure. Okay. Right. So that's the pipes themselves. Close that. Go back to my PowerPoint. So then we have these, as I said then, within Tecla we can actually detail the pipes. It will link those down. We get the real information for cutting the pipes in 3D. It goes to the machine. Ignore that. Let's just skip through. Then of course it cuts those pipes and you can see any kind of special cut is straight from Tecla like so. Doesn't matter what it is or how special it is. And that, of course, is your final product. Okay, so that's all, the, that's all the sort of final cut in there. So all the different variations of that. But there are also specialized beam cutting machines for beams, okay? Which do also three-dimensional cutting. And this is a new generation of machines as well. So within Tecla, if you're doing specialized cups or notches or weld preparations, again, simply model that within Tecla and then it takes that information, you simply export it out and then send it to the machine. Okay, this machine then looks like this. This is, this isn't the best video actually, it's pretty, it's pretty rough video, but it gives you an idea of how it works. So if I just skip this through, you can see that these are three-dimensional robotic cutting. Every single operation that machine makes is driven directly from Tecla. There's no manual uh, sort of programming required at all. So even though you may not have one of these machines for the next 10 years, the ability to download from Tecla is already there within the software. You can see there, they just send it down, the machine takes care of it. And we've run some real, really complex connections through this. There's no way you could compete manually with something like that. If you, to, if you have to take a drawing, mark out that piece of steel and manually cut that, it would take it would take days. This thing just takes a file and cuts it immediately. No drawing, no nothing required. So pretty much, if I went to my Tecla model here, and I said, okay, let's put in, um, let's delete this connection here, and let's put in a, a special connection, let's say an offshore connection. And I say this one connects to this one, just run the two together. This kind of complicated, let me just redraw this, this kind of complicated um, connection, let's just zoom in, like so. Just get it right. There we are. So you can see that these kind of connections with weld preparations and the mouse holes and the radius, that's what that machine will cook. Okay, so no need to manually create drawings. That is exactly the machine will read that data and cut that piece directly. 
So again, you send that to the machine, the information from Tekla, and it cuts those pieces. And again, that would be an example of a finished product with the well testing done on there as well. And that's the next thing I want to look at is the sort of uh, welding. Okay, we also link down to welding robots. These we don't see too many of these at the moment, but they are starting to come onto the market. In Tekla, we put a lot of work into make, into actually modelling all the welds now into the uh, software. So any weld, any kind of weld can be put into, into Tekla, and then that data can be read from material lists or the linked automated machines. So in Tekla, we model every single weld. It's complete with its correct size, its correct grade, its weld preparations. And you can see there we can colour code it as well if you want to. And then we read that data out, we take it to the machine. I'm just exporting that actually again. We've got a simple export. Export it out, it takes that file and then passes it to the machine, which then does automatic welding of that piece based on the model. Again, before I show you the actual video of the piece, let's just take a look at in tech for what we've got here. So let's say then I'm gonna drop it an angle of gear, so a little bit more modeling in tech club. I'm going to draw a beam, and let's say the beam goes from the nearest point of here, and it goes to the nearest point, let's say there like that. I'm going to click on that, I'm going to say that is actually an L, uh, let's say 120, L 120, 120 by 20. So now it's an angle. And we can click on that, position it so it's set about the right edge, like so. Okay, so that's the piece again. I'll just change the colour so it's nice and easy for you to see. It's now it's blue. Then I'm going to say, okay, these two pieces are welded together. So then we've got a steel, we've got weld. And we say, okay, it's a polygon weld. And we say that piece welds to that one. And it goes from that point there, and it goes to that point there, like so. I'm just going to turn the welds, uh, the sort of tails of the welds on, so I can see what's happening. So I'm going to say welds are exact. I'll stand and see the little weld marker. I click on the weld marker and I can then say, okay, what kind of weld is it? Well, let's say it's a, it's a four millimetre weld and it's a fillet weld, a bolt weld. That then is the weld in the model like so. Okay, so pretty much anything can be welded together that easily. And again, all the types and styles of welds, if we click in here, we can say make that staggered weld. Let's say I want to have five spacings and let's say it's 200, miss 200. Okay, like so, so you can have any kind of type and style of welds you want in there. If, let's say, I've got a sort of uh, weld preparation in the middle, I'm going to say, look, well, edit. I'm going to make this into two pieces, so I'm going to say, let's split this piece about the middle of there, so now it's two pieces look like that. And then I'm going to say, okay, let's go to steel, I'm going to do a weld, a polygon weld, weld that one to that one, and the weld goes from, just turn on this snap geometry, so it goes from that point there to that point there. So I've got a weld. I'll then click on that weld, and I'll say it's six millimeters, it's a fillet weld, and let's say the angle is 90 degrees, like so. That there, look, is a 90 degree fillet weld. And we can click on that, and we can say automatically do the uh, weld preparation. So automatically do the weld preparation on there, like so. That piece now, look, is cut automatically for the weld. It's all part of the new functionality for in Tekla. So any weld you put in there, so I click on that weld, the weld preparation will automatically adjust itself. So if I change that to, let's say, a weld with a throat, so let's say this one here, and let's say it's got a two millimetre root radius, so modify that, you can see what now I've altered that preparation like so. So really nice and easy to do, so again, change that. So if you change these away, exactly what you need to do with it. Like that, in fact, that should be four millimetres to that. There we go. So you can see now I've dropped the weld, so it's more into that depth of the. Okay, once you've done the welding tackle, we can then send it to a welding robot. So I'm going to skip this video on a little as well, so I don't like the introduction to this. Sorry, bear with me. Okay, so then what we do is from detailing, that's the piece in Tekla, we export it out and then it takes it down to the software on the welding robot. Uh, the welding robot then will take the information. There's one guy running this machine. So you can see, you can actually see what the machine's going to do before it actually sends it down. 
so you can check everything is okay. Then it goes down to the machine. There you go. Got quite long hair, isn't it? And then what we can say is we can say, okay, uh, there look, there's a welding robot, and exactly those welds I put in the Tekla model, it will weld exactly as we put in the Tekla. These machines actually come from the shipbuilding industry. They're just beginning to come into, into structural steel right now, but originally they're from shipbuilding, where it's a lot of repetition. Okay. Again, nice and easy. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a lot of time. I'm going to continue anyway. So, uh, when I get going, that's what I do. So, uh, again, that's the welding robots. Uh, we can also, as well, uh, there's a lot of talk in the industry about uh, laser scanning. So, we can also take in laser scan models. So, if you've got a machine for laser scanning, there's an example here, which is really like the automatic surveying. So if you've got an existing structure, you can do an automatic survey and they can take that model into Tekla and continue to detail that. The other thing we can do is we can take models into Google Earth. Right? So if you want to take, if you want to take my Tekla project, so let me show you an example. I could do this live, but uh, just, for, just for the sake of it, if I just open up another model, uh, let's do this, this one here, if I open this one up, I can quite simply say export this out and drop it straight into Google Earth. So here's a little example here, we just tile that, you can see just a small little project. Then what we can do is we can, if we go to Google Earth, put a million windows open, bear with me. There we are. So you can then save it. I can email this to my, my colleague in, in Finland. You can double click on this and then it will actually tell it where it is on Earth and then it will actually find the location where that project is and place that Tekla project in real Google Earth. I place it in the UK just, just for the sake of it, no, no, no particular reason, but you can see there, look, if they're going, it will actually draw that, and that's, the, that's that same model up dropped into, into the model, into, tech, into Google Earth. So you could actually take your project and drop it into Mint. It's very simple to do. And actually, as well, that same model can actually go to a 3D printer as well. It's the same thing, it's the same export. So um, a lot of the world now is mapped in 3D, so you can put projects exactly where you need them to be. Okay, they're, they're easy to do. Yeah, okay, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll finish this one now then, because the final thing I'm just going to talk about then is the very, very latest generation of, of CNC machines which are robotic assembly machines. These, these are coming out of the market very, very quickly now. And if I just show you this. I'm going to just skip it on a little bit and get back to it. So you've got all the, all the parts that have been made by the other machines. There they all are. So these have been cut by plate burning machines. And they're on the table. And then this machine here, is what it does is it actually does an automatic assembly. So I'm going to skip on this video as well. I know it's fine. So then what we've got first of all is got the main piece, which is here. You load it into the machine and then it automatically puts it together. So it's an automatic assembly machine. And then you'll see in a moment. What it first of all does it, of course, it measures it and it makes sure it's the right length, it makes sure it checks the width and thicknesses, because sometimes it can be rolled incorrectly. So it checks that, it knows it's correct, and it picks up the pieces like this. And based directly from the export from Tekla, it then fits those pieces together and automatically assembles it based on the Tekla model look like so. Right, again, you don't see too many of these on the market, but they are coming these. We see more of these than we do actually the automatic welding robots. So, there we are. If anyone would like a copy of these PowerPoints or videos, you're more than welcome to take a copy of them. I'll leave them with the Nestor, Steve will pass those on. Uh, but that's my presentation finished. So just a little overview of Tekla for, for structural steel and the sort of automated machines and BIM concept working through the workshop. So thank you very much. Have a rest of a good day. A good day for the rest of the day. <laughs> thank you.